How's it going, you guys? So for this video, we're gonna go over the cycle detection problem called Happy Number, and this is a problem asked at Google and JP Morgan. So the description says, write an algorithm to determine if a number is happy. A happy number is a number defined by the following process. Starting with any positive integer, replace the number by the sum of the squares of its digits, and repeat the process until the number equals one, where it will stay, or it loops endlessly in a cycle which is, does not include one. Those numbers for which this process ends in one are happy numbers. So in this first example that Leak Code provides, we're given an input 19, and so we're given any positive integer. And you can see from the explanation that every digit is squared. So one and nine make up 19, right? And so if you square both of those and sum them up, you get 82. And then in the next line, we do 8 squared plus 2 squared, 68. 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100. And then finally, we do 1 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared, which is 1. And when we encounter a 1, that means we have a happy number. So this problem is going to involve using cycle detection, specifically Floyd's cycle detection algorithm. And if you're familiar with how to detect a cycle in a linked list, this is pretty much the same exact way to solve it. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys what this algorithm looks like. So there's two parts to solving this problem. The first part is understanding this Floyd cycle finding algorithm. And then the second part is knowing how to extract individual digits from whole numbers. So let's go over the first part. If you already know Floyd's cycle finding algorithm, feel free to skip this part of the video. The idea behind the algorithm is we're going to have two different pointers. The first pointer is going to be T, and this stands for tortoise. And our tortoise pointer will always start at our head node. So that would be node one. And then we're going to have H pointer, which stands for hair. And our hair pointer will start at head.next, which is node two. And the main idea behind the algorithm is the tortoise on every iteration step will move one step in front. So the tortoise will move to node two. But the hare, since it's a faster animal, right, it'll move at two steps. And so the hare starting from node two will move to node four because it took one, two jumps, right? And so you can imagine that if there is a cycle in this path, eventually the hare is going to lap the tortoise because they're just going around in a circle. And so pretty much our exit condition for finding if there's a cycle is if t is equal to h. If our tortoise is equal to our hare, that means we did find a cycle. So let's go over this simple example just to make sure it's understood. So our tortoise starts at node one, hare starts at node two. What we're going to do is we're going to move our hair two nodes forward. So our hair moves to node four. And then our tortoise takes one step forward, moves to node two. When you do the same step, our hair moves to node five, then node six. And then our tortoise will move one node forward to node three. And then our hair moves from six to eight. And our tortoise moves to node four. And then finally, our hair is going to do a jump to node four. And now, since the hair and the tortoise are on the same node, we found a cycle. So Understanding this algorithm is the first part to solving the happy number problem. So let's go over the second step, which is understanding how we can extract individual digits from whole numbers so that we can actually do that square calculation. So this problem wants us to extract each individual digit from a whole number, square them and add them up. So if we had the number 123, this would be one squared plus two squared plus three squared, which is one plus four plus nine, which equals 14. 
So we need to extract each individual digit from our number. And the way we're going to do that is using the division and modulus operator. So if we did 123 mod 10, that would give us a remainder of 3, right? Because if we did uh, 123 divided by 10, right, we'd have 3 left over. So it's always the last digit, which will be the remainder. And so this number, we will end up squaring, right? Because we did that calculation. So this will get squared. It'll be 3 squared, and that will equal 9, right? But how do we get to the rest of the numbers? What we have to do is use the divide. So we would do 123 divided by 10. That would equal 12. And this number, when we after we do the division calculation, whatever the result of that is, is our new number that we're going to be basing it off by. So now we take this number 12 and we do the same thing. We're going to do 12 mod 10, right? The remainder of 12 mod 10 would be 2. So that's where this 2 comes from. And then we square it, we get a 4. And we do 12 divided by 10. That would be 1, right? So we have one number left, which is just the number 1. And so we do the same thing. We do 1 mod 10. 1 mod 10 would be 1. So we square it. That would be 1. And then we do 1 divided by 10, which is 0. And so when the division gets a result of 0, that means we are finished looking at all of the digits in this whole number. So all of these calculations, so the 9, the 4, and the 1, we sum them up, and that's when we get this 14 right here. So just to reiterate, the two parts that we need to solve this problem is first we need to implement Floyd's cycle finding algorithm, and then we need to perform this basic arithmetic in order to calculate our new nodes. And so in this example that I went over, this 14 would be a new node. So just for example, if we started out with 123, our next node was 14 right? Because we did 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared equals 14. But then from 14, we would do 1 squared plus 4 squared, which is 1 plus 16, which is 17, right? So after the 14, our next node would be 17. And this would just keep going on until we either find a cycle or we don't. If we encounter where our tortoise pointer and our hair pointer are both ones, then that means we're good, then our input is a happy number. If that's not the case, if we find a cycle and it's not equal to one, then that means it's not a happy number. So let's jump over to the code and I'll show you guys how we can implement this. Okay, for Floyd cycle finding algorithm, we need two pointers, the first being the tortoise. And this is always going to start at our head node, which is n right? That's our input. And then we have our hair pointer. That will always start one after our head node, which is next of n. And so next is a function we will eventually implement. And what this function will do is part two of what we went over, where we extract each individual digit, square them, and sum them up. And so now we can say while tortoise is not equal to hair, if this condition is not true, then we need to move our tortoise one step forward, and we need to move our hair two step forward. And if they are not equal, we will continue to do this. If they are equal, then we need to come down here and say return tortoise equal to 1. If the tortoise is equal to 1, that means it is a happy number, right? If it's not, then it's not a happy number. And so in here, all we have to do is move our tortoise and hair pointer forward. So we can say tortoise is equal to next of tortoise. Because all we're doing is reassigning what tortoise is. We're just moving it to the next number. So it's easier to think about it if you think about it like a linked list. So 
it's a it's essentially the same thing as saying cur equals cur dot next, right? That's the same thing as tortoise equals next of tortoise. And then our hair pointer, we need to move two pointers forward. So we're gonna say hair equals next of next hair. And this is equivalent to doing cur equals cur dot next dot next. So these lines are essentially equivalent. One, yeah, we're using integers, but in a normal linked list format, that's how it would look. And so now all we need to do is implement this next function. So we can say private uh, int next, and we're going to pass in a number n. And so we're going to be returning a sum from uh, this next function. So we can say int sum is equal to 0. And we're going to say while n is not equal to 0. When n is equal to 0, that means we've looked at every single digit. So then we will just return our sum. So now we just need to calculate our sum. So to do that, we need to extract the very last digit in n and then square it. So we're going to uh, do sum plus equals n mod 10 times n mod 10. Because n mod 10 will give us the very last digit in n, and we're doing it twice because we're squaring it, right? And then now all we need to do is do the division, because remember the division will cut off that very last digit, and this will get us eventually down to n to be equal to 0 so that we, we can exit this while loop. So we'll say n divide by 10, and we just reassign n. So now let's just make sure that this code works. And there we go. So next, I'll go over the time and space complexity. Our time complexity is going to be log of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our path. And so you can imagine if we do not have a cycle in our path, our hair pointer will get to the very end, while our tortoise pointer will only get halfway because our tortoise is only moving one step forward and our hare is moving two steps forward. If there is a cycle, they will eventually meet, but they do not have to look at every single element. So that's why it's log of n. And then our space complexity is constant. Nowhere in our algorithm do we implement any extra memory. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, say goodbye.